Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be going over the electrical conduction system of the heart and how it correlates with a normal sinus rhythm, EKG versus an irregular heart rhythm and more. But before we start, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. So within your heart, you have your SA node known as a sinoatrial node that is originated in the right atrium of the heart. This is referred to as the pacemaker of the heart. So under normal conditions, the role of the SA node is to fire at a rate of about 60 to 100 beats per minute. This is also controlled by the autonomic nervous system that regulates the heart rate. So it's like an umbrella term. The autonomic nervous system controls your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight response and your parasympathetic nervous system controls your rest and digest. So the SA node will travel down into the AV node, which is located in the leaflet of the tricuspid valve known as the atrioventricular, which helps delay the signal until the atria are empty of blood. So from the AV node, the electrical signal travels down into the bundle of His, also called the AV bundle, that looks like a branch of fibers, which is then divided into your left and your right bundle branch. So it wraps around the ventricles that sends this electrical signals through these Purkinje fibers, allowing the ventricles to contract. So to tie in the blood flow of the heart with the electrical conduction system, when contraction occurs, blood from the right ventricle sends deoxygenated blood to the pulmonary artery out to the lungs where gas exchange occurs and becomes oxygenated blood. It will then send the oxygenated blood back to the pulmonary vein into the left atrium through the mitral valve as the blood received from the left ventricle when contraction occurs, it sends oxygenated blood through the aorta out to the rest of the body where it will help perfuse vital organs. So when there is an electrical fault, it shows up as an abnormal EKG or irregular heart rhythm. And so take a look at this image shown. It has a normal sinus rhythm. You have the normal PQRS waveform and the electrical conduction system is within normal limits and it's doing its job without error. However, right next to normal is an irregular heart rhythm um, where atrial fibrillation occurs and the atria are quivering and blood is not flowing like it should, which could create a pooling of blood in the atria of the heart. So the EKG is erratic, the P waves are not upright and the rate is irregular. So we use EKGs as a diagnostic tool to help intervene and treat appropriately. We always correlate this with the patient's symptoms. However, it is key to know and understand the role of the heart and how an EKG works. So to summarize, two bullet points. EKGs are used to monitor drug um, treatment. For example, if a patient is getting premature ventricular contractions, also known as PVCs, and their electrolytes are depleted, it would be reasonable to replete your potassium and magnesium if appropriate. The other point is pattern recognition. So let's review all the aspects of the PQRST breakdown uh, with a quick review of a six second strip. So looking at a six second strip as shown here, each small square equals 0.04 seconds, which is about five of those small boxes. And one large box equals 0.20 seconds. So in a six second strip, it is made up of 30 large boxes when you're analyzing it. So I just want you to visually look at this photo. More for the familiarity of a normal PQRST waveform, as I plan to dive in and correlate that with how it ties in with the blood flow of the heart. So the P wave is in green. Um, it should always be less than 0.12 seconds, which is about three small boxes. The PR interval is in gray and marks the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the Q wave, which measures about 0.12 to 0.20 seconds, which is about three to five small boxes. The PR segment that is in gray is at the end of the P wave and the beginning of the Q wave. So the Q is in orange, the R is in red, the S is in purple, 
which makes the QRS, which normally measures 0.06 to 0.10 seconds, which is about 1.5 to 2.5 small boxes. The SD segment is in gray and begins at the end of the S wave and ends before the beginning of the T wave. And in blue is the T wave. And the QT interval is the beginning of the Q wave and the end of the T wave. Now let's look at an EKG and the electrical activity of the myocardium. So looking at the photo, the top portion is your normal PQRS T waveform that is color coded and numbered one through five. And the number on the top is associated with the numbers below, which is based on the activity of the myocardium conduction. So when the heart images, it looks like a yellow orange color, it reflects depolarization and green represents repolarization. So for item number one, the P wave represents the beginning of atrial depolarization. Item number two is your PR segment where atrial depolarization is complete, which is the conduction of the AV node. And your PR interval, if prolonged, can result in a first degree AV block as shown in the photo. You see that extended PR, or if your PR is shortened, can result in tachycardia. Item number three is your QRS when ventricular depolarization begins and the atria is repolarized. So item number four is your ST segment. That is completion of ventricular depolarization. So the ST segment could be isoelectric, which is a flat line. If there is ST elevation or ST depression, um, that could be an indication of an MI or a cardiac ischemic event. So as a side note, the J point that's not commonly mentioned um, is begins at um, the end of the QRS and the beginning of the ST segment. Item number five as labeled is your QT interval that captures your QRS, ST and T wave. That is where ventricular repolarization begins. So a key point regarding the QT interval, it is used for medication management such as chloroquine, which is used to treat malaria. It can commonly prolong the QT intervals, causing patients to go into a life-threatening arrhythmia called torsades, the pointes. Another key point is if patient has a bundle branch block, it will reflect as a widened QRS. So hence the QT interval will be prolonged. However, it's a QRS abnormality with the, from the ventricular depolarization, not the QT problem. So item number six indicates ventricular repolarization is complete. And rarely do you ever see this, but a U wave can appear that would follow the T wave and occurs during bradycardia and hypokalemia. This happens from late repolarization of the mid myocardial M cells, which causes a longer action potential. All right, don't forget to check out one of my other videos and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.